Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, I guess I'm on a roll today with my videos. And when you're on a roll, I guess you should keep rolling and rocking. So what I want to talk about in this video is some uh, recent papers that have come out on the AMOC. Because the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation Ocean Currents is such an important part of the component of the climate system, it will, a collapse of the AMOC would completely disrupt the entire planetary climate system. So it's very important that we not um, forget about this particular wrench in the cogs of the climate system. So let's talk about the recent paper. So this is an article from just a few days ago. October 13th, 2024, in Science Focus. The Atlantic Ocean's currents are on the verge of collapse. This is what it means for the planet. So people are getting very concerned that the Atlantic Ocean current system in the ocean, it might be about to reach a tipping point. And if it does reach that point, it will have severe consequences for, for all of us on the planet. So this is an image from NASA of the ocean currents. So it prompted me to have a look at the ocean currents. And this is a great um, video that was done several years ago called Perpetual Ocean by NASA. So I just want to play it. Okay, so you can see the, the Gulf Stream heading up there over to Europe, bringing tremendous amounts of heat. So this is actual, this video is actually put together based on data collected on those particular months up there. You kind of see how these whirls and eddies are formed and then they have momentum and they propagate and can travel, you know, across the entire ocean to other regions. It's a really cool video, very uh, relaxing and therapeutic actually with the music. Uh, so you can see with all the land masses here, the, the huge um, structure and, and uh, dynamic nature of the ocean currents. <coughs> this is the Kuroshio current coming up off Japan and crossing the Pacific. trade winds coming this way, driving the water that way in the, those currents at the equator. Very few current structure around Antarctica because of the ice coverage, of course, the sea ice coverage. trade winds. Okay, so this is called NASA Perpetual Ocean. Very cool video. And actually, if you go to Earth Null School and you select um, Ocean and Currents, then you can see um, what's going on today. So you can see the Gulf Stream over here. And, uh, you know, the, the trade wind currents 
and you can just click on any of these regions and it shows you uh, the speed of the current and the direction and you can change the units just by clicking clicking on them here to get uh, familiar units to, for you um, let's go off yeah so we can zero in on say the gulf stream for example coming across so an AMOC, you know, the Gulf Stream, of course, brings tremendous amounts of heat from equatorial latitudes to the northeast over to Europe. So if the Gulf Stream was to shut off, the AMOC uh, shut off the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation Currents. That's where the warm water comes up. It cools down. Um, and, uh, you know, the um, sea ice is forming and rejecting salt, so the water gets very dense. So not only is it cold, it's dense, it drops down to the ocean floor and completes the overall global ocean um, conveyor belt, if you like, or another term is thermohaline circulation. It's ocean currents and circulation driven by thermo heat and uh, haline salt. Okay, so there's UK over here. And I'll just show you a couple uh, things on Google Earth with UK. So we've got, of course, the Thames River flows up this way through London. And Liverpool is a major uh, city here. And you've got the um, this, this, this river coming in. And there's another river over here. This is the uh, river... Um, River Mercy. Okay, just to show you because that's mentioned in the article. So coming back here, back to the original article, it says icy winds howl across a frozen Thames River. Ice flows block shipping in the Mercy docks of Liverpool. Crops fail across the UK. Meanwhile, the U.S. East Coast has been inundated by rising seas and there's ecological chaos in the Amazon as the wet and dry sea season basically switch around reverse. The world has been upended. What's going on? So this sounds like scenes from a Hollywood disaster movie, but there's been a new scientific study that investigates the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, and this study says that it could occur for real as soon as 2050. So, and it, it's, it's a preprint out there for comments. And I'll talk about that in paper in a few minutes. So an AMOC collapse is very, very important to humanity, to society, to the planet. If there is a disruption to the AMOC, then everything changes on the planet. So the AMOC is often called the Great Ocean Conveyor. It's a large system of ocean currents that includes the Gulf Stream. It circulates warm, salty water from the tropics, equatorial tropics, northward into the North Atlantic, where it cools down as it goes to colder regions and it becomes denser, right? Cold water is heavier than warm water. As the water cools, it sinks and it flows back southward at the ocean floor at deep levels, eventually rising back to the surface throughout the rest of the ocean, creating a continuous loop of circulation. And it transports vast amounts of heat around the Atlantic. I like how they put it is equivalent to boiling about a thousand billion kettles, <laughs> right? Everybody boils their kettles in the UK. This is a UK article. So a billion is 10 to the 9th, 1,010 cubed. So you've got 10 to the 12th kettles. You know, each kettle might be, what, 10, 100 watts or something. So we're talking about 10 to the 14th watts or something of energy. You know, is this from this analogy? <laughs> anyway... It's responsible, the AMOC is responsible for about 25% of the total heat that flows into the Northern Hemisphere from the ocean and atmosphere. This heat warms the winds that blow in off the Atlantic over Northwest Europe, it contributes to the relatively, relatively mild climate that Northern Europe gets, and it helps to stop the Arctic sea ice from spreading down beyond Norway. So there you go. 
I've often talked about the vanishing of the Arctic sea ice, especially in the summers from Arctic temperature amplification. Well, the AMOC is certainly a wild card because if it shuts off, we're going to suddenly get a deep freeze uh, in the Arctic, at least temporarily, or, you know, when I say temporarily, it could be for decades or longer. I mean, we need to look at the paleo records, the shutting down of the AMOC, the restarting, the shutting down in so-called um, Osher site, the, the Osh Dansgaard Osher oscillations um, and Heinrich events um, <clears throat> where ice flowed from the Arctic across the ocean. So the effects are global with the AMOC, because if the AMOC gets weaker and causes the northern hemisphere, the whole northern hemisphere cools if the AMOC gets weep, weaker. So the climate belts of the world, including the equatorial rainfall belt, where, where, where rain, a lot of rain falls, those are going to shift southward if the whole northern hemisphere cools because of an AMOC shutdown. So the AMOC is a key component in the stability of the global climate system. You know, as global warming continues, the surface of the high latitude North Atlantic is getting much warmer. It's also getting fresher because of the melting of the Greenland ice sheet, right? That sends fresh water out onto into the Atlantic and also the Arctic sea ice. And there's also increased uh, precipitation in the far north as it gets warmer. So the surface ocean becomes less dense up there. That prevents it from sinking. That therefore weakens the AMOC, the whole thermohaline uh, circulation system. Also changes in the location and the strength of winds that blow across the ocean can also alter the AMOC. So during the ice age, the winds were stronger, right? Very powerful jet streams because of a larger, um, larger uh, temperature difference between the Arctic and lower latitudes. So there was a stronger Gulf Stream so that strengthened parts of the AMOC. But as we go to a warmer world and a greatly warming Arctic, then the slowing of the, 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 the lowering of the temperature gradient lowers the driving forces and the winds, etc. So the AMOC, um, that, that likely contributes also to a weaker AMOC. So is it definitely changing? Well, we have direct instrumental measurements of the strength of the AMOC, since 2004, right? A, a grid of sensors was put across the Atlantic. It's called the Rapid Array of Buoys to measure ocean currents across the Atlantic, I think at 26 degrees north latitude. So we've got those 20 years of continuous measurements. Just within the last 20 years with those measurements, the data shows a 10% decrease in strength of the AMOC. But there's a lot of variability from year to year, so we can't be sure that this is a meaningful long-term decline. It's a decline over 20 years, but is it, uh, does it extend further? So we try to look back beyond 2004, so that we have indirect measurements of the strengths of the AMOC. The sea surface temperature data from south of Greenland reveal a cooling trend over the past several decades which is unusual given the global warming pattern, general global warming pattern. We're talking about a global warming hole, right? Just south of Greenland. And that seems to indicate that the AMOC has been slowing down. Also, salty water is normally transported into the North Atlantic as part of the AMOC. And this salty water is building up in the South Atlantic. So the South Atlantic is getting saltier. The North Atlantic is getting fresher. So that salt transport has declined, indicating that the AMOC has declined. So there seems to be reduced heat and salt transport by the AMOC, so it's a weakening system. Now we can go back further in time and look at paleoclimate data. So paleoclimatologists have used ocean sediment cores containing mud and the shells of once living organisms that settled in layers on the seafloor over thousands of years to study changes further back in time. So this data seems to suggest, and I've talked about these papers in the past, that the current ocean current weakening is unprecedented in the last 1600 years. So something strange is going on. 
These lines of evidence indicate that the system may have already weakened by about 15%, and these papers came out a number of years ago. But it's indirect evidence, so we're still not for sure certain that there's been a substantial decrease in the AMOC. So it's like a detective puzzle. Now, climate models suggest that the AMOC could weaken by 30 to 50% by the end of this century if greenhouse gas emissions continue at current rates. That's without even tipping points being crossed. So this weakening of the AMOC alone will alter weather patterns and we'll get more extreme weather in Europe. It alters tropical rainfall patterns, right? Where there's tropical rainfall now, there becomes drought regions and we're in drought regions further south becomes tropical rainfall as the intertropical convergence zone moves southward because of a cooling northern hemisphere if the AMOC's actually shutting down. So droughts in some region, floods in other region, regional changes in sea levels, faster increase. There'll be a huge increase along the U U.S. eastern seaboard if the AMOC slows down because it, it, it's very important. It's a dynamic sea level effect due to the ocean currents. Even with only a small amount of climate warming, the AMOC may switch from very strong to very weak or shut down in decades. So this is a tipping point and it will cause huge climate impacts around the world. We might cross a tipping point in the AMOC because of the salt feedback mechanism, right? So the AMOC imports salty surface water into the Atlantic and it exports less salty water into the deep ocean. When it weakens, the surface of the Atlantic then gets even more fresher, which further weakens it. So there's a runaway feedback process that could lead to collapse. And you could, sometimes these things are triggered by a small initial forcing, like ongoing melting of the Greenland ice sheet, for example, could make the water fresh enough to initiate or kickstart the whole process. So there's been math, mathematical models that have sort of revealed or exposed this tipping point behavior in the early 60s. But until recently, most climate models like the IPCC Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reports, AR6 was the last. It didn't show this behavior. So the consensus view in 2021 for the IPCC was that an AMOC collapse before 2100 is unlikely. But the AMOC in the climate models is biased towards being too stable, according to recent papers since then. Most future model simulations of the AMOC don't include the impacts of the melting of the Greenland ice sheet, for example, which would seem to be me to be very important. So some recent statistical analysis of AMOC indicators suggest that, you know, we're talking about by, by 2050, perhaps, an AMOC tipping point. But these studies have been questioned, right? People don't like the answers. Um, they're derived from longer yet indirect time series of AMOC, not the rapid uh, direct measurements from the rapid array at 26 degrees north latitude, right? We have new climate models to look at tipping point behavior. And also it's very important to determine the best location and metric for detecting these EWSs or early warning signs of a salt feedback induced tipping point. So the model-based knowledge is being applied to observational data sets. So one yet to be reviewed study. So there is a study that's not peer reviewed yet, but it's out and I'll talk about it in a few minutes. It estimates the probability of an AMOC collapse before the year 2050 at somewhere between 42 to 76%. That's a huge number. So, so just under, under a half, to 76% chance of an AMOC collapse before the year 2050. So within the next, uh, what, 26 years? And that will change the planet completely. An AMOC collapse, of course, it would, it says could, of course it <laughs> would disrupt food supplies or ability to grow food, water resources, fresh water, it would increase energy demands in the Northern hemisphere for heating, it would strain infrastructure, you know, it would basically change the game of, of climate change. Okay, so that's the point. That's the gist of this science focus article. 
And again, watch the video on the perpetual ocean, load up, uh, just Google Earth Null School, click on the menu Earth, open the menu, go to ocean, go to currents and play around, move around the planet and look at what the currents are doing. And this is uh, basically real time data from Earth Null School. Okay, you know, also Google Earth uh, to, to look at regions that are discussed and mentioned in articles. So this is a paper. So this is a key focus of my video here. Um, and it's basically called, it's, depart it's physics and statistics, the Institute of Marine and Atmospheric Research, um, Princeton people, Netherlands, Utrecht University, Probability estimates of a 21st century AMOC collapse, okay? So the bottom line is there's more and more concern that the AMOC may collapse this century and that would disrupt society over large parts of the world. Preliminary estimates of the probability of such an AMOC collapse have so far been based on conceptual models and statistical analysis of proxy data not direct data. So here they use observationally based estimates of such probabilities. They look at reanalyst re data. They, they first identify optimal observation regions. So where should we look on the planet and what parameters should we look at, at to know if an AMOC collapse is coming? Right. So, and then they looked. So, so they looked at uh, also uh, global climate model simulations to see what was going on. So it turns out that the salinity or saltiness of the ocean near the southern boundary of the Atlantic turns out to be optimal or the best to provide estimates of the time of the AMOC collapse in the climate model. So they looked at the reanalysis products to get numbers on the salinity data in those regions and they didn't determine probability density functions or PDFs of the AMOC collapse time. When will it collapse? The results are pretty sobering. The collapse of the AMOC is estimated to occur or will occur between 2037 and 2064. With a confidence interval, that's a 10% to 90% confidence interval within this period, which starts in basically 13 years. And, you know, it's an interval of, uh, of about 27 years, right? So they're narrowing it down. The mean is 2050, and the probability of an AMOC collapse before the year 2050 is estimated to be 59 plus or minus 17 percent. So this is a huge number. It's as low as 42 percent and it's as high as uh, 76 percent. Okay, so this is, uh, this is uh, like I said, this is on ARXIV. It's a preprint. It's going through the peer-reviewed scientific process. Um, so it's not out there yet, but it's out there in preprint version and it's very important. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things. I mean, they give a preliminary um, thing on the AMOC, transports relatively warm surface waters northward and cold deep waters southward, maintains Western Europe's mild climate and strongly modulates global climate patterns. The AMOC is becoming an ever more studied component of the climate system because it's considered one of the major tipping systems which may undergo a transition under human-caused anthropogenic climate change. The AMOC can potentially collapse as a consequence of surface freshwater input in the North Atlantic, like ice melt from the Greenland ice sheet, or a change in the surface freshwater fluxes or movements. A collapse from its current strong northward overturning state to a much weaker or reverse state would have major climate impacts. Like it basically cools the northern hemisphere. So in other words, there'd be a meridional shift southward in the tropical rain belts. The tropical rain belts would move south. So no longer where you're getting the tropical rains, would you get them? You could get drought there and the rains further south. 
you can get dynamical sea level changes, especially off the east coast of North America, for example. Water's not pushed there, um, or because of the slowing, more water piles up there with a sea level rise of, of uh, you know, huge sea level rise, maybe even up to a foot high off the U.S. east coast. And that would happen very quickly within years of, a, of the collapsing and during the collapse. We'll get a substantial cooling in northwestern Europe. The evidence of past AMOC changes comes from paleoclimate reconstructions, which show an alter, alternation between stronger and weaker states of the AMOC during these Dansgaard Osher events or DO events. Determining the probability of such a transition to happen before the year 2100 is an urgent problem in climate research. Okay, and it looks, look at this number again, 59 plus or minus 17% of an AMOC collapse before the year 2050. So they talk about the monitoring of the AMOC using the rapid transect. It's an array of ocean buoys measuring water current. Some are tethered to the ocean floor, others are floating. So 26 degrees north, they've been measuring date, taking observations on ocean currents, temperatures, salinities, et cetera, since 2004. There's another transect called the Samba at 34.5 south. They've got data since 2009. And there's another transect, the Osnap, from 53 north to 63, 60 north, and that's been running since 2014. But the direct observational record of the rapid, right, is only, is only 20 years. Historical AMOC reconstructions have been developed using sea surface temperature observations over the subpolar gyre. So these are so-called AMOC fingerprints, and they show the AMOCs weakened by three plus or minus one sverdrup since 1950. So there's these early warning signals uh, that are being are statistical indicators to investigate the proximity of the AMOC to its collapse. And they're based on a critical slowing down um, and some statistics and probabilities and so on. So there was a paper, Dit Levson and Dit Levson 2023, that estimated that the present day AMOC would collapse in the year 2057, the confidence interval being between 2025 and 2095, being at 95% confidence. But there was substantial criticism of this paper because it's based on proxy data and the statistics was questioned. Okay, but this present, this, this new paper actually um, has similar results, right? The probability of an AMOC collapse by 2050 is actually quite high. So they talk about the best locations and they show statistics. They run the models from year one out and they look at lots of different curves of different parameters of the AMOC strength at different latitudes and the um, overturning, the forcing, the overturning forcings um, and so on. Okay, uh, so, and then there's lots of maps showing this is across different um, longitudes and this is different water depths, and they look at the different temperatures of, of the water and looking and, and they try to figure out, you know, what has changed the most? Like what would be a good indicator or early warning system? And they looked at tipping times and probability density functions of tipping going out, tipping points and so on. And uh, so it's basically a lot of physics, a lot of math, a lot of statistics. And, you know, they talked about in the IPCC AR6 report, the probability of an AMOC collapse is considered to be low with medium confidence. Their analysis in this paper provides the first probability estimate from reanalysis data. It gives a mean tipping time estimation of 2050 with a 10 to 90% confidence interval between the years 2037 and 2064. So this, is, this narrows it down. And this is comparable to the findings of the paper published a few years ago that used the subpolar sea surface temperature index. And it estimated the AMOC tipping time to be 2057 
with a 95% confidence interval between the years 2025 and 2095. Right, but they're saying the subpolar SST index doesn't give an early warning signal in the simulation. So it's not optimal, the subpolar gyre, it's not optimal to observe in order to find an early warning uh, signal that the AMOC is going to collapse. So then it argues that the salinity of the ocean um, near, you know, further south is a much better way to look at it. So they looked at the reanalysis data. They looked at the salinity and they found that it was very useful to give an AMOC uh, tipping probability. Okay, so that's the gist of the paper. A lot of math, a lot of computations, lots of figures showing what they're measuring. And this is actually interesting. They, this is significance region. So this is early warning indicators for salinity at different depth levels of the ocean. So these are at different uh, depth levels, and these are area. The blue areas are show a significance ratio for salinity. Um, the red dashed lines are just transects where the where the observations are occurring. But you can see the re so the salinity regions here are changing quite a bit. This is at five meters, one hundred five meters. 209 meters, so different depths. So if we have sensors and measure the salinity in these regions, this could be an early warning indicator for an AMOC collapse, which is coming out of this paper. Another thing we can look at is just temperature at different depth levels. So, the, so before it was salinity, now it's temperature in these regions seems to be very significant to, to the AMOC. So if we see big changes in temperatures in these regions, we know, watch out, the AMOC is collapsing. Okay, and because it's a thermohaline circulation, it makes sense that temperature and salinity are important to measure. It just turns out that these are the regions, this, according to this paper, are more significant for giving us a, a heads up or an early warning signal on a collapse. And then they run all kinds of different models um, at these different depths and measurements of um, this was uh, restoring rates, so changes over time in the um, AMOC, estimated tipping point. Uh, for t this is for salinity, and this is for temperature. So based on those regions that they show, and they look at probability distributions, PDFs, and so on. Okay, but I mean, the, the, key, the key point is, the result of this is the collapse time for the AMOC is estimated to occur between 2037 and 2064, that's a confidence interval between 10 and 90%. So it's very, very likely. The mean of this is the year 2050, and the probability is somewhere between 59, is 59 plus or minus 17%. So if you go to the casino and bet, I'd say this is pretty good odds. This could be, you know, with the error bars, this is as low as a 42% collapse or as high as a 76% collapse, so three out of four. And that's by 2050, which is only 26 years off, the last time I checked. Okay, so this is huge. There's, I'll just show you some of the background papers, not in detail, but um, this is, uh, was published uh, in uh, last year. Uh, towards two decades of Atlantic Ocean mass and heat transports at 26.5 north. So that's the rapid array data, right? The continuous continuous measurements of the AMOC and meridional ocean heat transport at 26.5 north began in April 2004, and it comes up to present day. About 90% of the total meridional heat transport at 26.5 is carried by the only average overturning circulation. Right, so it's the AMOC basically, the gyres and so on. So this is some data on that. Um, and uh, the full paper I believe is here. It talks about the importance of the AMOC and there's lots of curves and stuff. Shows the uh, array of where the sensors are and the measurements, uh, different arrays across the breadth of the ocean at 26.5 north measuring ocean currents and temperatures and stuff. So this is more of an observational measurements. Then there's a paper on 
how the slowdown would affect global and European climate impacts. This is behind a paywall, a paywall. So, you know, it just talks about, it uses a state-of-the-art global climate model and it looks at what happens if the AMOC slows down, shuts off. You know, we'd get widespread cooling through the North Atlantic and Northern Hemisphere in general would cool. We'd have less precipitation in the Northern Hemisphere mid-latitudes. We'd have large changes in participation precipitation in the tropics, right? The precipitation, the regions of highest precipitation in the tropics would move southward. We get strength, a strengthening of the North Atlantic storm track because of larger delta T's, temperature differences, right? They focus in this paper on Europe, right? So we'd have um, summer precipitation decreases in, the, in Northern Europe and increases in Southern Europe negative summer North Atlantic oscillation signal, winter precipitation, there'd be more winter storms, strengthened winter storm tracks and so on, stronger winds and so on. So they, you know, it would be difficult to get water and uh, to grow crops, right? From, from these sort of things in Europe. So that's a paper on that. This is a uh, paper, um, I think this is, yeah, this is from a few years ago on the climate impacts of a weakened AMOC in a warming climate, right? So they uh, looked at the AMOC effect given anthropogenic warming, and they wanted to isolate effects that would occur to the AMOC. They talked about the North Atlantic global warming hole, reduced Arctic sea ice loss in all seasons with the delay of six years in the emergence of ice-free Arctic. So an ice-free Arctic or blue ocean event would be delayed, of course, or even put off for a number of years, even even uh, perhaps decades by uh, an AMOC collapse, right? There'd be an anomalous cooling band stretching from the lower levels in high latitudes to the upper levels in the tropics. It would displace the Northern hemisphere mid-latitude jet streams and so on, right? All of these things would happen. It's re it's a real wild card in the whole climate system. So this whole paper is on that. And uh, persistent freshening of the Arctic Ocean, changes in the North Atlantic salinity caused by Arctic sea ice decline, right? Those things can actually exacerbate the probability of a collapse of the AMOC. So that's discussed. This is a 2022 paper. Again, I'm just, uh, there. Th this is a rapid array at 26.5 degrees north, actually. Um, and uh, it talks about the array. It talks about some transport in spur drops of ocean currents through the array, the Gulf Stream, Rindle overturning circulation, Ekman or spiraling currents, the upper mid-ocean. So different currents and what's, what, what's happening. There's a lot of fluctuation. You know, you try to pick out a trend um, okay, so that's some of the observational uh, data in the ocean. The, uh, there, here's some data from or information on the last glacial maximum. We had a deeper and stronger North Atlantic gyre. Okay, uh, from the paleo records, right? So the subtropical gyre, modern data reveals it extends to a depth of about a kilometer deep in the northwest Atlantic. Uh, but in the last glacial maximum, it extended down uh, to two or two and a half kilometers, about a kilometer deeper because of the ice, ice age occurring. So you can take this data and reverse it as, or you can say, you know, if the AMOC fails and it cools the North Atlantic, what does that do? How does that affect the um, ocean currents? And how does that affect, you know, what what's in play to... I mean, what would we need to restart the AMOC once it shuts down? Because we have these Dan Guard Osher cycles in the Paleo records, and it did shut down, start up, shut down, start up. Okay, so that provides some information on that. This is a paper going back six years, observe fingerprint of a weakening Atlantic Ocean overturning circulation. You know, this was the evidence of weakening by three plus or minus one sphere drop, about 15% since about 1950 or so. This weakening is revealed by a spatial and seasonal sea surface temperature fingerprint 
consisting of a pattern of cooling in the subpolar Atlantic Ocean and warming in the Gulf Stream region. So the global warming hole just south of Greenland, right? They were already talking about that, about it back then. Current Atlantic Merindal overturning circulation, weakest in the last thousand years. There's a, there's a paper on that that was published uh, three years ago, right? They, they reconstructed the evolution of the AMOC since about 400 AD and got a very clear picture. After a long and relatively stable period, there's an initial weakening starting in the 19th century, followed by a more rapid decline in the mid 20th century, leading to the weakest state of the AMOC occurring in recent decades for today's time period. This is Stefan Ramsdorf is on this. Okay, so then I went to Google Scholar and I just did search for AMOC weakening and it came up with a bunch of papers. I clicked on since 2024 to have a look and got even more papers. So weakening AMOC under extreme climate change, the impacts of the AMOC weakening on Arctic temperature amplification and, and loss of uh, sea ice leading to blue ocean events. That's sort of covered there. Lots of other papers. Um, so this is the one of them, the impacts of the AMOC on Arctic amplification. So it talks about how you know, we're getting uh, Arctic temperature amplification with the loss of more and more sea ice, more sunlight hitting the open ocean, not being reflected, right? That's a, um, that's a reflectance uh, effect. Uh, but then it talks about a slowing AMOC, basically uh, how it can, uh, you know, have a huge Im impact. And they, a weakened AMOC can reduce the annual mean Arctic warming by two Celsius by the end of the century. Right. The, the, so the reduction of warming, you know, uh, so there's less sea ice, more warming, right, by a reduction of albedo. But the AMOC can reverse that sort of thing. So it could, we can have a big tug of war going on and then the formation of clouds, etc. Everything changes. Um, so it's a real battle and tug of war and it's not clear which would win out. And you need to consider the time scale. And then I went to perplexity just for fun. And I typed in, so perplexity.ai, right, the AI. And I just typed in AMOC weakening. And it just told me, well, AMOC's a crucial ocean current system, has a significant role in global climate regulation. Recent studies and observations have raised concerns about its potential weakening and its implications for the Earth's climate. So it's slowing down. It might be weaker now than it's been in the past 1,500 years. So it finds that paper that says that. I mentioned that. Climate change, particularly through increases in ocean heat content and freshwater inflow from melting ice sheets, is believed to be a contributing factor to this weakening. And then the consequences. So if the AMOC weakens or collapses, there's far-reaching consequences. Cooling in Europe and North America, warming in the Southern Hemisphere, including New Zealand, shifts in global precipitation patterns, and a strengthening of storms along the North Atlantic track. So some of these things are covered and I've mentioned already in papers that I've found in the last few years. So, I mean, this is doing a good job, a good summary so far. We would expect a southward displacement of the intertropical convergence zone, the tropical bands where we get loads of rainfall in the tropics. That would move southward because of the warming northern hemisphere. We'd get a slowing of Arctic sea ice decline. It's already happening because of the AMOC and changes in the strength of the westerly wind belts in the southern hemisphere. If they're strengthening in the northern hemisphere, I guess they're weakening in the southern hemisphere. We'd get accelerated sea level rise around North America, maybe as much as a foot of dynamic sea level rise on the east coast of, of the U.S., for example. Reduced primary production in the North Atlantic Ocean and a disruption of marine ecosystems. And then future projections. The AMOC is very likely to decline um, going out this century. There's medium confidence that it will avoid a collapse before the end of the century. So therefore, there's medium confidence that it will, it will collapse before the end of the century. 
Some studies suggest more dire scenarios. A 2016 experiment projected an 18% weakening under an intermediate emission scenario, 37% weakening under a high emission scenario. Uh, a controversial study published in Nature Communications, and I talked about that, it estimates a potential collapse of the AMOC between 2025 and 2095. It doesn't have this most recent paper, which just came out um, in the last uh, little while. That's not mentioned here, I don't think. Okay, and then how, if you want to know more on how the weakening AMOC would affect global weather patterns, um, there's, a, there's more information here. Um, you know, like atmospheric circulation, you get a southward displacement of the Hadley cell if the AMOC collapses. Right, changes in atmospheric trends similar to those that occurred during the Younger Dryas period, and just different regional effects. And uh, what regions will be most affected by the weakening of the AMOC? Well, of course, the North Atlantic, North America, Europe, the Arctic, the, well, tropics. All the the whole planet is affected. <laughs> I like how which regions are most affected. I guess it ranks them in in order of most affected to more longer range effects. Right, and there's lots of other questions that are asked. Um, so you can just spend a few minutes on perplexity.ai to get updated information, but don't spend too much time on it because it's a power hog. Okay, as people have pointed out when I talked in you know in in comments to my last uh, video on AI. Anyway, please consider going to paulbeckwith.net and donating to my PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks again, and uh, bye for now. Sorry, no Newton or Sally in this video, or Shackleton, of course. Okay, bye for now.